This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Um, you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. da -na -na this is a <laughs> sham. No, no. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> Welcome to DBL. Good to see you guys. It's glad we made it to Friday here. The situation in Gaza is turning dire. Israel told more than 1 million people living in northern Gaza to leave within 24 hours. But the UN says that's impossible. They are demanding that Israel now cancel that order. Israel dropped flyers like this one in Arabic so people could understand, telling people they have 24 hours to leave their homes ahead of a possible ground invasion. Meantime, there are reports that Hamas is telling civilians in Gaza to remain steadfast in their homes. So what do we think of this and what are Gazans supposed to do? I do also want to let you guys know Egypt is right there next to it and they could let the Palestinians in Jordan as well. We have Secretary Antony Blinken over there trying to encourage a deal but so far no go. What do you think Al? I think we're setting the stage for something really terrifying yeah. to happen. You know you, you've got literally uh, Almost the figurative definition of somebody in, in a rock in a hard place. The people that are basically your occupiers right now, Hamas, is telling you you can't leave or you should not leave or you will not leave. And the country that's preparing an all-out terrifying ground offensive is saying, we're coming. We're literally sending you a, a, a message ahead of time letting you know we're coming almost this to kind of make sure that they are covered in terms of whatever atrocities happen, they can kind of be covered and say, hey, we told them that we were coming. So what are these people supposed to do? And the answer is be slaughtered. That, we have to start talking about this like, like we're in the streets. That's what's going to happen, unless there, you guys have any other flowering language, because I want you to say something to make me feel better, Erica, because I'm really scared about what we're going to see over the next week. I have nothing to say to make anyone feel better. How yeah. do you feel good about any of this? You know, I mean, we've had so many conversations this week with people who are physically there right now, people who have, you know, obviously we'll talk more about this later, but I, it's like, I really, I struggle to, to find the words for any of this and I don't feel like some people feel like this is like so far away. I it's don't not. feel that way. It's not and I will just just to offer you this before you speak Jeff. I want to get your take. Today is Friday the 13th. It is also known now as the day of jihad, the day of rage. American Jews are to be very careful today. They are asking for American Jews heads and bounties for them. I was escorted into the building today as a Jew from our security. It has reached this area. Jewish friends aren't going to school today in the United States. They're not going to work today. So please, if you see a Jewish friend, walk them to somewhere. Be with them today. It is getting closer to home. Please, you go ahead and speak. Yeah, that's scary. That's yeah. scary to even think about, right? Yeah. But it's even scarier over there, Yeah. right? Yeah. Because of what's going on. And I don't know, we were... People in Israel doing such a good job of getting the message out despite what's happening over there, which is horrific. They're saying we're doing everything we can to save innocent, to save casualties, but there's going to be. There's only so much you can do, and there's only so much you could withstand before you have to start striking back against Hamas. They're united as a nation. It's going to get ugly. There's going to be a lot of casualties, but they have to do what they have to do. If the border's not letting them in exactly. over at Egypt, exactly. they have to protect their own. They're doing what they have to do ahead of time. And the only thing Hamas has, I know they have weaponry and backing from other places, but they, they live off fear. Yes, They're saying, error. hey, if you're, you can't bomb us here. You have little kids in this building. That's right. They're not letting them leave the buildings that the Israel people are saying get out of these exactly. buildings. Exactly. Hamas is saying stay there. They're saying hey we don't want to kill these people but they're cutting babies heads off. So at some point Israel's going to strike back. They're trained soldiers. Everyone goes to uh, military. Oh, we got to go. All right. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> okay. All week we've been talking to people who are there in Israel about their experiences as Jeff was speaking about and a few of those interviews happened on our other show that we also tape every single day. We would thought we would share some of that with you. Up first we spoke with an Israeli news reporter who is on maternity leave with her three month old baby girl and she spoke to us from a bomb shelter in Israel. Here's a portion of that interview. Natasha, uh, first off, we just really want to ask you how you are doing with everything that's going on. Just, you have the floor. 
You know, it's funny. That's what we keep on asking each other. How are you doing every time you pick up the phone and, and you speak to your friend? How's it going? That, you know, natural reaction to say good. It's uh, it, it does not apply here. We are living in a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. As I speak, you're probably going to keep on hearing buzzing from my phone because I'm getting notifications of rockets that are consistently being fired into Israel, into southern Israel, into northern Israel, into central Israel, into Tel Aviv, where I live. Um, we have been living this nightmare since Saturday morning. Saturday, I woke up um, to horrifying images of Hamas terrorists on the back of pickup trucks that have infiltrated Israeli communities around the Gaza Strip. These, in the videos, the images that I started receiving as a journalist, I said, there's no way that this is real. I couldn't believe it. It just seemed too far-fetched because everything was so barbaric that I was receiving. And then we understood that this was real. My husband got called into reserves. He's been in reserves. He's a special forces paratrooper, um, and he's been in reserves since Saturday, um, basically extracting the dead bodies of innocent Israeli civilians, and I'm talking women, elderly, children, babies. He came last. He came home last night for a couple of hours, and he told me that he had witnessed with his own eyes babies that had been beheaded, decapitated, people with their hands chopped off. This is not, this is real. This is what's happening here right now. And we're all scared to death. And it seems that no, the only thing that I can do right now from where I am, because I'm, mater I'm on maternity leave, I'm not in the studio, is just share video after video after video on social media of what is happening to us. Um, and it, it's unbelievable to me that you see people responding by saying it's propaganda, it's fake, or they're trying to justify this because of the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Hamas is the equivalent of ISIS. Yeah. They've been savagely murdering and massacring Israeli civilians. Just as Jeff said, that is part of the warfare now, is getting their message out. So we are so thankful for Natasha to take the time with us. Another person we spoke to was a survivor of the music festival that came under attack by Hamas last weekend. More than 260 people were killed, massacred. He survived by hiding for eight hours in the thorn bushes. Here's some of Guy Dannon's story in his own words. Take a look. So we were uh, at the party. Uh, we came, a bunch of friends, came to celebrate uh, my birthday. And uh, yeah, people were having fun. You know, it was, we even took pictures of the sunrise like minutes before uh, the, the attack would happen. And at around 6.30 a.m., the missile attack started on Israel, but no one was like very, very stressed, at least like for my friends, uh, like because it's quote unquote, uh, we're used to it. Mm. So uh, the the security forces in the area evacuated the the whole place, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> sorry, the the security uh, forces evacuated the area, and uh, we split it up. Uh, we stayed. Uh, me and uh, one friend stayed at uh, one spot on the on an open field, uh, and around 40 minutes later, we started hearing gunshots, and the gunshots were getting closer and closer. Uh, so at this point, I felt like something is wrong and we need to escape the area. We went to, to my car and we started driving, but it was pure chaos because there were a lot of attendees at the event uh, trying to escape at the same time. So uh, we, we just got out of the car, started running by foot uh, to the woods area. Uh, and then we saw like a whole crowd starting to run to the same direction. So I was thinking we cannot run uh, with, the, with the whole crowd. We have to be secluded. Mm. And uh, at this point, we were hiding like between some trees and the shots were getting closer and closer, like maybe 20 meters away from us. We could hear the, the gun chamber going back and forth on the, with the guns. Uh, and at this point, I was pretty sure that this is it. We're, we're gunners. There, there's no hope for us. I even told my friend, like, I, I told her, I, I love you. Mm. And like, maybe three se seconds later, two friends that were left earlier 
came right in front of our eyes, like an act of God. And it just gave me the th strength to, to, to tell myself, no, we are getting out of here. No matter what, we are getting out of here today. Just so you know, Guy did manage to make it out because of a absolute stranger who saved him. Um, we're hearing more and more of these. We will keep you updated, but we want to let you all know that we stand with Israel. And I just want to remind everybody that when we hear these terrible stories and they're heartbreaking, just remember like him being saved by a stranger, him turning to his friend and like looking her in the eye and really saying, I love you. There's always moments of humanity that come out. So you have to make sure to be aware of that as well. There's something special about us when we're under crisis. Amen. We'll be right back. Hey guys, what's going on here? Uh, Lee wrote us in before and said this, I have a distant relative from Tel Aviv in Israel, and she says the worst is yet to come. They are all bracing for this. Um, and he says, or she, I'm sorry, Lee, let me know. My body feels weak. This is starting to take a toll. It affects me like this. I can't imagine what they are going through. I have to also just tell you about that. And I told Al this the other day, notice that everyone we speak to is somewhat flat of I was hiding in the bushes. I could hear Hamas right next to me. And there's no like terror. It's almost a loss of affect. Much different than like when you hear a 911 call. That's right. It's like, get right. And apparently, and I've heard this from many Holocaust survivors and their children, when they speak of the Holocaust, they go flat. There's no affect, and it's almost a way because the body is protecting itself. You can't go there. So everybody we speak to who's like, my grandmother was killed in front of me, then her kibbutz was burned down. There is an emotion, and I don't want you to think that that's because they don't feel it. It's because they're surviving. They're literally trying to survive and cope, and it is a extraordinarily well-known coping mechanism for trauma survivors that they go flat in order to move on. And in Israel, Whenever you go to a dance club or anything, the armed guards there, there's a type of affect for all of Israelis and many of the innocent Palestinians of they've seen so much warfare that there isn't anything that shocks them anymore. And it's what we heard from yesterday. He said, we're used to it. That's not a, that's a horrendous way to live. I'm just telling you the way that is over there is vastly different than the way we live with safety over here. So they're always expecting a rocket or they're always expecting something and now it's come to fruition. So I'm just letting you know about that. Thanks so much. Welcome to DBL. Who will be the next Speaker of the House? Jeff? Republicans have been <laughs> unable to figure that out, even after meeting all week behind closed doors. GOP Congressman Steve Scalise said he was dropping out of the race after he failed to secure enough votes. He was the leading candidate for the position. Here is how one Republican Congressman described the situation last night. Take a look. We're a ship that doesn't have a rudder right now, and I'm thoroughly disappointed in the process. And I just pray to God that we find something. We've got to get the members back who have left. I think there's a consensus in the room that we've got to be here to get this settled. What do we make of all this chaos? I'll Jeff, tell you, I, we don't need to pray to God. I know. Jeff. I was like, what, <laughs> that, that's what, what you're doing. <laughs> that's what you're. I don't pray to God that you guys will have a response to a question I ask. You're here now, getting such, a paycheck. Such to a government answer. <laughs> what a way to get out of. Hey, look, don't blame me. Look. Yeah. And we're, God a, is not we're a theocracy, through. apparently, How too, right? How dare you put God in this? <laughs> well, the speaker of the house. <laughs> and I know we're laughing to probably keep from crying. Listen, Thank, you. Listen, listen, listen. Thank you. Thank you. It's craziness. It's, this is an issue of national security. Thank you. Yes. Let's be very clear. Our government is showing major signs of weakness, and this is not the first time. This is just an ongoing thing. Thank you. So when we talk about the safety of our country, the idea that our walls cannot be penetrated or we can't be penetrated, 
we can't even get together at the highest level with our leadership. What is that telling to anyone who is an opposing force that is wanting to harm American people or mm. this country that our government can't get it together? We are in times of war and conflict. Terrorism is taking over this planet. If our government wants to pray to God as opposed to getting their crap together, people will be not only affected, this is a matter of life or death. Get it together and get off your knees. Yes. Coming up on DBL, we're talking with Henry Winkler, a.k.a. The Fonz. He's giving us the deets on the new memoir that he has, and he's giving us behind the scenes of his time in Hollywood. Well said, Erica. Welcome back. In his new memoir, Henry Winkler is reflecting on his childhood, his Hollywood success, and everything in between. Earlier, he shared a story about the late John Ritter, and he told us about his new children's book. Check it out. Please welcome back to the show, Henry Winkler. In your new memoir, Being Henry, The Fonz and Beyond. Look at this great picture on the back. Ooh. Yes, let me see it, Henry. That's right. You got yeah. it? There he is. <laughs> hey yeah. now. Hey now. <laughs> you uh, talk about your friendship with the late John Ritter, who I love. We've got a picture here of you two from a softball team. And I want you to tell us about this picture and share a favorite memory you have of John, who I think was just a comedic genius. Okay, so my memory is that John Ritter was a comedic genius, and I am... I am grateful he was in my life and sad. I miss him all the time. Yeah, yeah. But the picture is one of the greatest memories of my life. Wow. Because uh, when I was in high school, my high school bordered uh, Central Park. I went to McBurney School for Boys. Uh, blue blazer, uh, gray slacks, a tie every day. But in, as a junior and a senior in high school, we could leave campus mm. and go into Central Park. And I watched the Hollywood um, uh, Baseball League play show against show. And I hung on the, the fence and I dreamt, Aww. am I ever going to do this? How am I ever going to be on that field? And in the year 2000, John and I did a uh, Neil Simon play in New York at the Music Box Theater. Mm -hmm. Ran for nine months. 
and had a Broadway League baseball team that I pitched for and John pitched for. And upstairs in my house, I have the opening day softball that I pitched and my dream came true. Wow. wow. Manifestation. Manifestation. Wow. Exactly. I love it. Now tell us really quickly, Henry, give us the inside scoop. Now who was the better player? Can you, who's a good hitter? <laughs> well, you know, you can't talk about the dead really, but I am. <laughs> Henry, you got a lot going on because you have not one but two books coming yep. out this month. So amazing. Uh, this is your children's book, Detective Duck. Cute. All right, it, now it's dropping on the 17th. Grab it. Yes, you match us now, one Detective Duck you, for another. She is a, a little duckling. She lives in New Hampshire. She is the only duck on the earth with a beaver for a dad. Aww. Uh, and she dreams about being a detective, and she uses her, detect her detective skills to solve ecological problems to keep her pond and all of her friends healthy. Oh, amazing. Well, Henry, we have about a minute uh, left, but yes. um, I understand you have a partnership with a pharmaceutical company to encourage people to get their eyes checked. Why did you want to get involved in this? I'll tell you why. When I met my wife, her dad, my future father-in-law, became my dentist. Oh. I watched his eyesight diminish mm. from uh, aging macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know it really at the time, but I saw him read the, his letters and then a machine came in that enlarged the letters and then that didn't work. So when Apellis uh, approached me, I said, yes, I, it will be a pleasure to tell people to go to the eye doctor mm. and see macular degeneration. At least there is something you can do right. to kind of slow it. Right. The next phase is geographic atrophy, and you cannot do anything about right. that. Wow. wow. Very important. So go to GA won't wait. Dot com. Man. We always love having you here on DBL. To our viewers, Detective Duck, The Case of the Strange Splash is out October 17th. <laughs> Check out a book tour stop in Cali California and Colorado. Yes. Oh, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Also, being I'm Henry. i to Colorado. <laughs> yes, you are. Come to our studio, too, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bean Henry, The Fonz and Beyond hits shelves October 31st. Visit CeladonBooks.com to find a book tour stop. And lastly, as you just heard from Henry himself, visit GA Won't wait.com to learn more yeah. about geographic atrophy and make sure to get your eyes checked. Thank you again, Henry. Good Thank man, you. sir. What You're a good pleasure. Man. Always. We'll be right soon. back. Thank come you. Come see us in Colorado. Yes. Please come. <laughs>
Welcome back. If you got some projects in the works to add value to your home, look no further than your bathroom. We're talking about it in today's tip sponsored by Jacuzzi. First, change out your tiles and flooring. Use water and heat resistant materials to get the most bang for your buck. Next, upgrade your toilet to a low flow unit to save water and money. Finally, maximize your space with a mix of open and closed storage options like cabinets, baskets and bins. If you want to start your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do it the right way. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched stress-free remodeling process, visit jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 1-800-990-6834. Bathroom, bed, and your your main room Beyond. TV. That, that's where you spend your money. <laughs> Because people sleep on the bathroom. You're in there a couple times a day, you know, every day. You're totally right. And you Get know what night, I hear is a nice. really big thing. You might know this. The color of your front door can help you sell your house differently. I could see that. Yeah, like you could kind of sell an aesthetic of like a wood door is kind of yeah, rough, like apparently door. a red door is big or a black door is a big thing. I'm gonna phone a red door every day. <laughs> it's like I'm going into a fairy tale. I don't know how true that <laughs> statement is. All of it's yeah. true. Yeah. All of it's yeah. true. You can tell yeah. it because I said it during credits. Yes. DBL is new yeah. every day. Whenever somebody yells, all of it. I true. can't sell my house. Did you think about changing your door? <laughs> I'm hey. telling you. We will see you on Monday. Y'all have a very safe weekend and a blessed weekend. And let's have some gratitude for how happy and safe we are here in America. Take care.